Welcome back to bonus number two with the Mastering Etsy Print On Demand, the completely free course that I've created to help you be your own product boss from anywhere in just pockets of time. Grounded by years of small business experience, expert testing because I never preach what I haven't practiced, and crafted to suit anyone no matter what part of the journey you're on, my goal is to show you the ropes, help you build out a strategic approach for print-on-demand success, and give you a results-based grip on driving sales using the Simply Pod framework that I've developed and that this entire free course is based off of. In case we haven't met yet, hey there, friend. My name is Mandy. I'm a busy Midwest boy mama, former HR director turned full-time handmade small business entrepreneur and builder of print-on-demand shops that all together have reached almost six figures in less than a year all while not having to touch a single product or ship anything out to a customer myself. I'm obsessed with sharing knowledge that simplifies the Etsy print-on-demand process so that truly anyone can feel empowered to start their own journey. In this bonus module, we'll be walking and talking through all things personalization. We'll be covering the benefits of personalizing products on Etsy, some of the top niches that work really well for personalizing products, some ideas to go along with that. And then of course, we're gonna dive deep into creating a listing so that you can see exactly how to do it in both Etsy as well as Printify, which is the partner that I use for my own print on demand businesses. And then I'll make sure you know how to process that order when it does come in, because it will come in, folks. Personalization is the place to be on Etsy. So let's dive in and talk about leveling up your shop and trying personalization. There are some great benefits to having personalized items in your shop. Not only do customers love unique items, personalized products consistently perform better in terms of sales on Etsy. And since they take a little bit more time, customers are typically willing to pay a little bit more for that value as well. Not only do they add more value, personalized listings can also help you break into more saturated niches and seasonal offerings by having a custom version. And my little pro secret in all of this, when it comes to keyword optimization, keep in mind, personalized has seven times as many searches as customized. So stick that one in your back pocket and make sure you're using both. But personalized is definitely the term that you want to lead with on your listings. Some top niches for personalized products include items for pet parents, dog moms, dog dads, Bachelorette and bridal wedding, this is always a very popular niche to work with personalization products in. Baby milestones, things like blankets and other milestone items are great for personalization. Family vacations and travel where you can tie in a year or a family name to it. And sports parents has a huge amount of interest, whether it's for volleyball moms or cheerleading moms incorporating names and years and things like that is a great way to break into that niche. Whatever your niche is and whatever your ideal buyer demographic is, get creative and think outside the box for that niche. To get your mind jogging on some ideas of how you can incorporate personalization into your listings, I've pulled a few really popular examples from top sellers on Etsy, but I want to have a disclaimer here. Please, please do not ever copy other listings from other sellers. Come up with your own idea and put your own spin on it so that you can stand out from the crowd. Here's one for a soccer mom. You can see it's got the so soccer number on there. Future Misses is a great one for the bridal group. You can use tumblers or other different types of products. I've seen it done with tote bags for family vacations or bachelorette parties. Same thing with vacations. You could even turn this into a group listing with customization. There's so many different ways to add value with this type of technique. Same thing goes for pet parents. Whenever you can incorporate a pet name, pet owners love their animals and they love to have 
products that have their animals on them. So this is a great way to, again, stand out from the crowd and do something that isn't as traditional. So let's take a look at exactly how to do this. Always start with my design first. I've got that here. This is going to be a personalized pocket design. And so it'll be for different dog breeds. This one is going to be for a customized dachshund shirt. So I've just got a cute little image here. I've got just a placeholder name here for the mock-up. And then the second part of my process is then I go to the mock-up. So again, I've got all of my mock-ups ready to go. I've got it placed here. I've got my transparency turned down so that it looks normal and how it would appear once they receive it. So I have my design ready to go and I have my mock-ups ready to go. Then I'm ready to create my listing. Now, normally I start in Printify when I'm creating a listing, but this time because it's personalized, we're actually going to start in Etsy, and this is the fastest way to create a personalized listing. So I started a new listing, and I'm adding in the mockups that I created in Canva. While they're uploading, I work on the rest of the listing information. So again, first thing I'm going to do is fill out the title section. I always lead with the term personalized, and then I make sure that I use my niche focused keywords that I've researched and have planned out ahead of time. And then I will select about this listing. So with help from another company, because it has production assistance, made to order, all the usual categories. And then of course, because this is a sweatshirt, it has long sleeves and it's a pullover. So I will be selecting all of the associated attributes for this listing. Because it's got a dog on it, I'm going to select animal as the graphic and then I leave it as automatic and physical for the next two. Then for the description, again, I lead with one to two sentences that incorporate my keywords in it. And then I include a note that custom orders cannot be returned because they are made to order and they are customized. And then I also fill in information that I get from Printify. Then I also make sure that I've got my information in there about care instructions, that I don't have to gift messaging, and notes about the printing process. I select my printing partner. I select my section that it's associated with. And then of course I fill in my tags that again, I make sure I have researched ahead of time and are focused around my niche and my ideal buyer and uses terms that they will hopefully be searching for. And then for price, I usually just put a placeholder in here because when I get to the variation setting, I adjust it slightly for some of the larger sizes simply because the printing partners charge more for those. Quantity I set at the typical 999, just like it would come from Printify. And then I'm going to add my variations. And so for this one, because it is sweatshirt and I've got multiple colors, I'm going to select sizes as the first variation. And then I'm going to have color as the second variation. So for sizes, I will fill that in with the traditional size offerings that I make available. And you can use the default US letter that they have in there. I'm not a huge fan of it, so I usually just spell out the whole thing. It doesn't particularly matter, it's just a personal preference, so that's why I spell mine out. And then for colors, I will list all of the color options that I will make available based on what I know I'll be selecting on the Printify side of things. Once I've got those added in, I will click save and continue, and then I will finish out the rest of the listing. So because I said that the prices will vary based on sizing, I will then come into the size variation and set my price per size. And then I'm going to link photos with the mockups that I've uploaded already so that when the customer selects each color from the drop down menu, it will match one of the mockup photos in the listing. And since those mock-up photos are now fully loaded, I'm going to scroll back to the top and adjust that thumbnail on the first one so that it's zoomed in and so that the design can be seen well as a customer is scrolling because this first picture, remember, is what they will see when they're scrolling through the search results when they're out on Etsy. 
I've also got my sizing chart in there. And so now that we've got that set, we'll finish everything out in the listing at the bottom. Next up is personalization. So we'll turn that on. And then this is where we want to put in any instructions we've got for the customer so that they know that they need to add something in this box for the personalization. Then I'm going to select my shipping provider and then everything else is set other than applying a return and exchange policy that's already built in. Once that's good to go, we can hit publish. And that will now be a live listing out on our Etsy shop. And then I like to create a template over in Printify so that it's ready to go when someone orders. So we'll log into Printify, head to the catalog, and then we're going to select item that we want to create for the personalized product. In this case, it's going to be a sweatshirt. So we'll grab all the usual stuff that we select when we're creating a new product, and then we'll start designing. To grab the design, that I saved earlier. And then we will start designing our template. So we want this to match obviously what we created in the mock-up so that it looks as close as possible as to what we were intending for the design. This is a pocket design. So I've got it shrunk to about the size that I normally use for pocket designs for an adult sweatshirt. And then I center it on that center portion of the right side of the collar so that the center of the design is roughly under that right collar seam. Then I'm going to select all the color options that I'm planning on offering, again, just so that they're ready to go for when an order comes in, everything will match. I adjust my sizing options. I don't currently offer four or five XL simply because they are frequently out of stock and I don't want any disappointed customers. So once that is all saved, I will save the product. And then for this portion, again, normally for a regular listing, I would fill all of this out and have all of this set. Because I did all of this in Etsy, I typically don't do a whole lot. Sometimes I will set the price just as a safekeeping in case I accidentally were to publish this, but otherwise everything's hidden in store. I don't need to do a whole lot. So I will publish this as a hidden template and then that will be ready to go for when an order comes in. Now, if you were with me in my first bonus video, you're now going to hear again my best Midwest girl voice because it's time again for that oh for geez moment. Someone ordered from our shop and it's a personalized listing. What do we do now? Well, let's walk it through and see how easy this process really is. The first thing that I need to do when a custom order comes in is I go back to the original design, I copy it, and then I add in whatever personalization that they requested. In this case, their dog's name is Scout, so I have changed that design so that the correct name is there. Then I'm going to navigate into Printify, and then I'm going to grab that original template that I created for this design. And then I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm not going to edit it. I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to edit the duplicated version. So then I'm going to add in the design that I just created for the custom version. And now because I already took the time in the original template for this to get the sizing and placement right, all I'm going to do is grab the new version and I'm going to essentially resize it and place it over exactly where the template design is because it's already centered under the collar where I want it to. It's the right size that I want it to be. And then I just grab that original design that's on there and I simply hit the little garbage can symbol and that will remove the original template design. So all I'm left with is the new custom one that I want for this customer. I'll typically give it one more quick adjustment and final pass to make sure it looks right. And then I will give it a preview again to just make sure everything looks the way I expect it to and then we'll save the product. Because nothing is getting pushed to Etsy, there's really no other changes that I will make other than I will usually rename the title so that I know which customization this belonged to. So because this was for a dachshund pocket for the Scout, that is what I named it. Then I scroll all the way to the bottom, I make sure it's hidden in store, and then at the very end, I will click on save as draft instead of publishing. Now to actually get this order into production, we're going to head up to the top to the orders tab in Printify. 
And then because we have our Etsy store connected, but because there's no SKU associated with it, it goes into other orders. And so then we're going to select product and then we're going to grab the custom creation that we just made and save it as a draft. We're going to select the same variation and same size that the customer selected on their order. So in this case, an extra large white. And then we're going to click confirm. And the reason I do it this way instead of manually creating orders is because the customer's information is already here. So then all I need to do once I've attached a product to it is hit confirm. And now that's going to automatically import that order. And after a few moments, it will show up as ready to be fulfilled. So then I can click on that fulfill button and it's going to be off to production. And then it will go into production and get fulfilled just like anything else, which means that once it's done and there's a tracking number, Printify will send that over to Etsy with the order and it will get marked as complete on Etsy. And that's all there is to it. So again, this module and this course is all about making sure that you've understood the foundations of success for an Etsy print-on-demand shop by mastering product SEO and design concepts and feeling confident with those basic cornerstones within your shop. And then building on that with things like what we just covered, such as personalization and adding value to your shop, as well as consistency and driving traffic. This all centers around these Simply Pod concepts that are part of these modules. If you're following along through all of them, make sure you stay tuned for the final module on mastering traffic for your shop. You're so close to the finish line, my friend. Hang in there, keep going, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you on the next one.